Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you that how you can use Python to extract and save the data from a Arduino. So currently what we know for Arduino is that um, it doesn't come up with a memory. And the only way that you can get the data is through the Arduino IDE. The way we do that is first, before you insert a Arduino, you check what are available ports. And then you insert the new one and you will be able to see some new things coming up and try to figure out the new one. This is actually common five. So that's basically the new Arduino and you see the serial and this is what you see the result. So I realized that in the new version, you can put the show time stamp so that even though you just show the data here, the new lines, uh, it will also come up with the system time, which is fantastic. Now it comes with a question. You see that the amount of data coming in is quite large. And if I use control A, I wouldn't be able to completely select and copy and paste the data. Well, you can do it relatively quickly. Yes. Uh, and then paste it to somewhere else. Yes. Yeah, so somehow it was successful, but you have to do it. And then later on, if you just close it, data is gone. You wouldn't be able to retrieve those data anymore. And this is very dangerous. And think about in one case, say, if the computer somehow lose the power, you wouldn't be able to get anything. So it's very dangerous that um, if we keep on using this interface to save the data. So the mind comes in as, can we actually use a Python program inside the computer to always record the data into the computer? The computer itself could either be a Raspberry Pi or even be um, like a normal computer. And later on, we could even send the data directly online so you can see the results. So this is something that we're trying to tackle today. So in a system here, I want to show you quickly about my setup. So here is the thing that I've been connecting to. Here is a Arduino Pro Mini. So it's a Pro but it's a mini version. It has got quite a few pings. So you can see it's got A0 to A3, so four analog pings. And also you got quite a few digital pings from number two to number 13. So quite a few pings. The other good thing here is that um, this one is very small. So as compared to my finger, it's a very small version. Also, it doesn't come up with the FTDI, which converts the serial to the USB. So if you, if I'm just let this one do the work, I don't really need the FTDI to connect it to the computer. So you just need to power it. So in terms of saving power, it's very efficient. In terms of the cost, I have to say that you can go to Arduino FTDI you will see that the whole set is only roughly $15 or so, and you get almost like the full dot blogger. So it's pretty inexpensive. So the program we're putting is this. So it's a very simple program. Uh, the setup is literally to say that serial begin the number here. And then that was all the initialization. And for the loop, it basically measure A naught the A0 ping, the analog reading. And then we print the mil is. So the mil is is a result that measures the time from the program being running to the time when it's been called. So if the program has been running for three seconds, the mini is is going to be 3000. And that is actually an internal clock inside Arduino. And I suggest you to record that one to see when the data has been measured. The second is delimiter. And then we've got the printing, which is the sensor value. And then after that, we delay for 200 milliseconds and then repeat, repeat, repeat. So as we can see, what we do here is that if we use the serial monitor, here is the mini is, so it's 101 second. And then the number is floating, which is floating value. And we can try to see how the system may respond to my modifications here. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use this tiny little 
cable to short circuit the anode with the ground. So as you can see now, it's sitting on the breadboard. So give a brief idea about what breadboard is. So the the good thing for breadboard is that once I insert A0 into this line of track, all those tracks are interconnected. So if I just insert a pin inside here, I'm actually connecting to A0, right? So if you want to see what's looking like outside, so I can pull it out and you'll be able to see this is basically a male head. So these lines, these lines are interconnected. These lines are interconnected. And these lines are usually interconnected as well. Usually one side is ground, another side is power. So, but just be careful because some of the bread might have a break. So if there, if that, if you got a breadboard, it's always good to check whether you put the five volt here, they are able to supply power all the way down. And sometimes there is a break. So I'm just trying to put it back again, right? And, and then I got two extra pings. So I could first connect the ground and then to the A null. So one, two, three, go. So you see immediately this number goes back to zero. That means the A zero has been directly connected to ground. So that, that is actually functional. Now, as we said, this is bad in a way that we can't use, really use control A. You really need to do it very quickly. And if the computer didn't work, you lose the data completely. So now we want to save it into the file. So what are we gonna do? First of all, from the program I uploaded, the serial here is 9,600. But when I use 9,600, you see it's kind of strange result. Uh, this is a problem for Arduino Pro Mini really. So later on from the forum, they suggest me to use um, this number and it works. So just in case, if you find the number is very strange, if it's normal situation, this number needs to be exactly the same as the bolt number into the serial connection here. So this is very important. Now we switch into a second way to get the data, which is to use the spider. Before we do that, we need to make sure that the serial port is closed. So we need to close the window um, because if the serial connection is being taken by Arduino IDE, you wouldn't be able to use the second application to retrieve the data. So you really need to make sure it's been closed properly. So that's how I do now. And once you use spider, uh, here is where the script locates and here is the, um, the console. And currently we are at this directory. So the file that you can working on is uh, located in Pyduino, the code that we've been maintaining. So it's in Pyduino, Python and serial read Python 3. So that's under the uh, my account. So if you go there, you just need to copy and paste the whole thing to your script file, okay, and save it. Now, bear in mind two things here. Number one is that this, this code works for Python 3.7. I do realize that um, Python 2.7 has been in the system for such a long time. And now uh, officially Python 2.7 will be expired very soon. So that means everyone needs to switch to Python 3. And Python 3 is not compatible with Python 2. So if you got a Python 2 code and upgraded to Python 3, you need to make sure that it's compatible. So the code here is compatible only for Python 3, not Python 2. The number two is that if you install Spider, you always install through uh, Araconda. So this is the place that I install my version. So go for the 64-bit installer and download it. After you download it, the uh, required uh, module called the serial is not installed by default. So the way that you need to install that is to go to your Anaconda prompt and then open as a administrator and you say Conda 
install pi serial. This will install the pi serial library so that you can call it. Because my system has already been installed, so uh, I don't have to install here just in case if this is not installed or when you run this program, you find that serial is not here. Then what we have is screen display true. That means that when you get the new data, this is also always coming up. And you save the, save the file true, so you also save the file locally. And the delimiter is basically comma as well. Serial port. Serial port is the port that you identify through here. So as we discussed just now, we find that COM5 is the port for the Arduino Pro Mini. File name is basically the files where you want to save the file. And this is to FID open file name and then AB. So A is for appending, B is binary. One thing bear in mind is that um, usually if you try to write into a file, there is always a buffer. So once the buffer has reached a level, say one megabyte, save it to the file. So by doing this, the writing to the disk is less intense than immediately writing. This is usually done in Python 2 as comma zero, but I realized that this is not implemented properly in Python 3. So there is a lot of bugs. I had a search and it's not been, been done properly. So the consequence of that is that every time you try to look at the file and see where the uh, recording has been doing, you always see that there is a delay, uh, roughly a few hours or half a day or so. And it's more or less dependent on how big is the buffer. So never be surprised that if your file is not up to date uh, with your monitoring, which is pretty much because that the monitored data has stored inside the memory buffer and has yet right down to the file. So the best way to make sure it's been written back is to have the scale close or FID close. What we could try to also do down there is that maybe give a very, very small buffer zone, say one KB. And I didn't try that, but um, uh, as long as we make sure that the file is being closed properly before uh, we switch off this, we, you always be able to get that result. And on top of that, the screen always shows the data instantly. So it's always up to date almost immediately. Just bear that in mind. Serial, okay, so this is to open the port. So serial port is this port, right? This COM is usually in Windows. If it's in Linux, the format looks like that. Okay, timeout 20 means that if they fail to get the data for 20 seconds, they will just say it's been failed. And bot read, again, that was the problem we discussed just now. So somehow for the Arduino Pro Mini, I have to use 4,800, but this is just the way it is. So, so just use that. But if you use Arduino uh, Uno, I would say that 9,600 would work in this case. Now, this is the endless loop. Now, what we do is that we first read one line from the scale. Scale is basically the handle for uh, Arduino. And then it saves to the string. And the next time I want to do is to say time now, time, then grab the time, right? So the time give a specific uh, format. So if this screen display, which declare here is true, then print time, delimiter, and all the data coming from the uh, system. And then we sleep for 0 0.01 seconds, so which is 10 milliseconds, and then save to the file. So in the file, again, it's time now and the string scale right and then it just repeat 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 so literally if you don't stop it by Control c in the console this will run endlessly and these two lines will never be executed so in that case let's say if we have a monitoring scenario running for three days and on the fourth day it's still running and how can we stop we literally just use a Control c in the console and then copy and paste the file scale close and FID close to make sure that the file has been closed. So that the last bit of the memory has been saved to the, the files. So this is the process. The second thing I need to highlight here is that the time slip 
So why do we need to have a small time slip here? This is actually very important. So imagine if we do not have any slip, these few lines will run very quickly and we may request the red line almost instantly over time. And this will produce a big issue for Arduino because they've been overwhelmed by keeping asking for the serial connections and, um, and reading the data, which is pretty much similar to anyone who, uh, you know, if you have got uh, any uh, supercomputing experience is that if you use a batch system, you could use a for loop in batch to submit a lot of simulations. If you don't sleep, then they just feel overwhelmed and then they wouldn't accept your simulation request. Instead, within the loop, you always need to say a time slip so that system slowly being fit in with the right simulations there. So this is the time slip. So currently I find that 0.01, 10 second, which is 10 millisecond, really works. So one more thing that I find is that um, in, in Arduino, the highest frequency for monitoring is um, 1000, which means that they can measure 1000 times per second. So if you really need to reach that high frequency, which is almost the highest frequency that um, uh, Arduino can offer, you really need to try to play with this value. I'll explain that later on because of the buffer issues. So if this number is higher than your measuring frequency, there will be some error I'll, and I will discuss that with you. So let's run this. And again, run file. What you will see is that we got a data. So this one is the screen result and that's been enabled by the line here. Whereas save to file is to save a file called output CSV file. So currently it's still zero byte. So we can even go there and see whether it's been uh, saved properly. So if we go to uh, output CSV, see it's still zero KB. And then let's open it. Nothing, see, nothing inside. So still they are writing to the buffer and yet coming to the output CSV file. But never mind. What we can do is we let it go and then see whether this one responds properly to my actions here. So what we can do again is to put it here and the other side is my Arduino. What I want to do is that I want to pull this one out. So one, two, three, go. You see the result respond almost uh, instantaneously. So that means the result has always up to date. So I could also change that to the power. So five volt. So I put two into the five volt. What you will see is it immediately goes to 1023. So that means the result is up to date, which is fantastic. Now, let's say this is the complete of our experiment. So we use control C to interrupt that. And if we go again to the output CSV, what you will see is that the output CSV is still not having anything. And the way that you can get the data is to run these two lines. And I guess that now it should come up with something. Yes, so that's everything. So the last line is going to be 1024 or something. Yes, okay. So that's the way that how you can save the data. Again, if you really want to save it instantaneously, this is the place that you need to dig on further. I think we can somehow reduce the buffer zone. Now, another thing I need to discuss is about the timing between the two. So as you can see, the time slip here is 10 milliseconds and the measurement delay in between in the um, analog serial command is every 200 milliseconds. So the request here is shorter than here. And this, I would say, is a healthy way. What wouldn't be healthy is that if you change this number being higher than this number, we will have problem. 
when we change this to 0.5. And I can first run the program. So these two are closed, and then we can immediately run the program. Now it's running, and it's giving me um, 1023, which means the result is being short circuited. Okay, now I'll pull this one out and see whether the response is immediate. One, two, three, go. Okay, you, I've already pulled out and it's still 1,023. And you will see eventually come down and then becoming the floating number. And if I want to do that again, put it to uh, ground, which is supposed to give me zero. One, two, three, go. You will see that still it's not going down. And it takes quite a bit time to um, reach zero. Now zero arrived. So what you can see is that if the number into in Python is greater than the interval set in Arduino, it's going to be dangerous because the result is not up to date. Why is that? This is simply because um, there is a buffer zone inside serial interface. So in the serial interface, let's say this is the memory, S-E-R-I-A-L, right? Okay, you got input. So what is the input from? The input is actually the Arduino, right? So how often they fit the data in? So it's actually uh, 200 milliseconds. Okay, so what they will do is that every 200 milliseconds, you receive a data. And then the second, one, two, three, and four. Now, you got an output as well. So what is the output? Output is actually Python. If this number, is just now we did five, 500 millisecond. What they will do is that they always retrieve the earliest data here. So the first time you ask for that, you actually retrieve the number one here, and then number two and number three and number four. And you, as you can see, always the input is higher than output. The memory is always full. And later on, once it's full, they actually will wipe off the earliest data. And that means you wouldn't be able to get the whole lines of the data. And even more terribly is that your time from the output is no longer corresponding to when the event is taking place, right? So that's also very, very dangerous. So the key thing is that you should always use a value here that is less than the 200 milliseconds so that the memory is always empty so in this case every time once you got data you will retrieve it straight away and then you wouldn't have any delay and by that, that, that time point, this time point will be valid. That's exactly when it takes place. The other thing is that, let's say somehow unavoidably, we have to make the data retrieval a little bit slow down. So how can we trust the data? I think you should never trust this time because this time is when Python receives the data. The thing that you need to trust is the minutes. And then the mini is, is the, the duration of time from when it's running to when the retrieval is taking place. So currently you can see the 200 milliseconds every time it increases slightly more than 200 milliseconds because you do the retrieval, they still have a little bit um, time taken, but every single time you see it's every, every 200. So this data, this mini is, you can trust that, but you should never trust the data for the retrieval. So now you got this. And one more thing is that if you control C and then run it again, you will see that um, the COM5 is being taken. It's excess denied because you can't 
Syria and Syria again before it's been closed. So you really need to make sure that it's been closed before you run the, the program again. And then we should be able to see a huge chunk of data from here. Right, so that becomes quite huge. So we got a data. And then you can further improve it, say, you could have a bit files to say how we can upload the data from the online dashboard so that you can receive the data in real time. This is the tutorial about how you can use Python interface to receive the data from Arduino. Thank you.